Today on Comic Storian, the Hulk has become a starship. This is Comic Story, and I take comic books, I turn them into audio dramas, and I narrate what happens within them. We leave enough out that you can collect it yourself, or you can use our videos to get up to date and then buy other comic books if you want. All alterations are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be covering The Hulk from 2021 issues 1 through 6. The first arc just resolved, and what this has been dubbed within the comic book community is Starship Hulk. This is the follow-up to Immortal Hulk, so this is what is going on with the Hulk afterwards. And don't forget, if you want early access, check out our Patreon. Now let's get into the actual storyline. There has been a theory about the Hulk, one that has never been shared because, quite frankly, it's terrifying. Everyone thought that the Hulk was the manifestation of Dr. Banner's trauma that he experienced as a child. Perhaps it was his ID, his shadow, his fury, his rage. But what if, what if, he exists to protect everyone from Banner. As Bruce locks the Hulk away, he goes to his locker, putting his things on, and Betty asks, where is he going? He cannot keep the Hulk locked up in there. He's just a child. What happened in El Paso wasn't the Hulk or Banner's fault. Bruce shouts that he doesn't blame himself. I blame the Hulk. He's only ever useful when he's locked away, and I have had enough. I never wanted this. I never wanted to be a superhero or a defender or an Avenger or a monster. I wanted to discover things, to invent, to push the boundaries of what is possible. But then, then this tumor started to grow inside of me, this sickness. And I would be a fool to think that it would ever stop growing. Don't you get it? The Hulk is immortal. Bruce Banner is not. Betty shouts at him that he needs to stop this. The Hulk will get out. This plan will blow up in Banner's face. But Banner simply tells her, Get out of my head. A loud thunderous boom continues to pound away and Betty vanishes. Banner then walks away from the now imprisoned Hulk into the control room and he takes his seat, taking a deep breath, telling himself, These waves do not crash on me. They break me because I, I am strong. Elsewhere, Spider-Man is sitting, asking if anyone else is very confused. Most of the world's heroes turn to Doctor Strange, and he says that he knows that it's a lot to take in. That is why he has gathered all of them here. This is potentially the greatest threat that they have ever faced. If the events of El Paso have truly broken Bruce Banner's mind, then he fears that they may be out of options. Captain America asks, How is this even happening? How is Bruce doing this? And Strange tells him that he doesn't know. What Bruce Banner has built should be impossible. Even high-level mystics and omega-level telepaths shouldn't be able to do what he did. But there is no way that he has built this himself. What Bruce has done is fractured his mind into parts. He's rebuilt it into, well, it is to be believed that he turned the Hulk into a starship. He split his psyche into three distinct parts, modified and upgraded the external frame with tech that he so violently stole from AIM and then somehow surgically implanted into the Hulk's body. He has built a mind palace, the likes that no one has ever seen. It is vast, it is complex, it is impenetrable. And at the heart of it all, where the Hulk's psyche should be, sits Bruce, a captain, astride the bridge of the starship Hulk. Outside, Bruce punches down on Tony in his Hulkbuster suit, telling him, Stand down and get the hell out of my way. Your armor is breaking, and I'm getting through that door one way or a... But after several more Iron Man suits drop out of the sky, Tony looks right at him. Come on. When have I ever been out of tricks, Banner? All of the suits then launch their payloads, the missiles exploding in the air, releasing shrapnel that begins to rain down upon the Hulk. Tony tells him, what you're feeling is that Amentium nanoparticle shrapnel. Nasty stuff. It burrows into your skin. And as it does, the nanoprogramming is going to forge the Adamantium on an atomic level, creating any shape or form that I want. In this case, a cage. Sorry, Bruce. This is where it ends. As the suit begins firing down upon the Hulk, inside, Bruce reaches for the throttle to the engine room, activating the systems to 10%. Inside the engine room, the Hulk feels something shoot him from behind, and as he turns around inside of this mind palace, an army begins to descend upon him. Outside of the mindscape, with the real body of the Hulk, 
Hulk's arm is pinned to the ground, and with the extra power that Bruce just activated, the Hulk begins to pull his arm up, ripping the flesh, exposing the bone. With one heavy punch, Bruce then breaks through the bones, freeing himself. Tony shouts that he needs to calm down. For one mad scientist to another, you don't! But Bruce punches through his suit, throwing him. I don't have to explain myself. He rips off the arm of another Iron Man suit, and Tony simply asks him, how did you know that the suit was empty? And as Bruce slams the broken arm on to replace his own missing arm, he tells him, I didn't. Thanks for the heads up, Tony. Using the broken arm's repulsor blast, he punches a hole through the wall and into Tony. He then charges in, punching into Tony's suit, sending him flying. And he tells Tony as he's begging him not to do this, I didn't come to fight. I came for this. Project Ark. You've been building this giant suit ever since you piloted this celestial during the Null attack. Using the latent celestial energies to create a wormhole to a pocket dimension that you could evacuate civilians into. It's good work, Tony. Bruce then continues walking towards the wormhole that was created using Tony's tech. Tony tells me he hasn't even finished the math. It isn't safe. You don't know where you're going to go, Bruce. Bruce tells him, good, neither will you. And he steps through. It wasn't long after crossing into the portal that Bruce is stopped by the alternate dimension timeline hazard operations response and intervention team. And well, there's more to their name and we would have discovered it if Bruce didn't just obliterate them by flying through them. The worst part is, during that situation in which he created a wreckage of this team that is supposed to be stopping interdimensional travel, Bruce was just asleep. He was awoken when the computers warned him that they had been targeted and pulled into a dimensional rift. Without more power, they wouldn't be able to break free of its hold. And Bruce asks, oh, we need more power? All right, 20%. Inside of the engine room, the space where the Hulk's mind is being captured, Stage 2 activates, and several of the biggest monsters appear, forcing the Hulk to continue to fight them. As Bruce is being pulled into the fissure, the computer states that the origin of the energy is unknown, but according to the sensors, they're being scanned for gamma radiation. Bruce begins to realize that it must be the Avengers. They must have found him. So he needs more power. Back in the engine room, the Hulk finishes taking down the mental version of Fing Fang Boom, only to have the massive body stomped on by a giant-sized Wolverine. The Hulk continues his fight with Bruce watching, and Betty leans in stating that he's going to break the Hulk. But Bruce tells her that she's wrong, watch as he increases the power. After another attack inside of that engine room, the Hulk rips off one of Wolverine's claws and uses it to stab the giant Wolverine in the chest. And that was the extra power that Banner needed. He begins to try and rip free of the dimensional fissure, sucking him in. But the computer warns him that they have received critical damage, that their hull has been compromised. System failure, intimate. The mental image of Betty tells him that he's not going to make it. This is what happens when you make a deal with the devil. Suddenly, the entire control room begins to break apart as Bruce is pulled into the portal and out on the other side. Even with his half-broken gear, Bruce gets back to punching the fissure, trying to reopen it, asking, What is this? Where am I? Let me out. And a man walks over to him, telling him, Oh, oh God, I finally caught one after all these years. Bruce tells him, you better start talking before your world is ripped in half. And the man tells him that he is so different from the rest. He can speak, reason even, and he's in control. Please, don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. My name is Dr. Bruce Banner. As the bald, eye-patched wearing version of Bruce Banner leans in closer with a light, Bruce grabs it, throwing Bald Banner against the wall, shouting, Who are you? Start talking! Bald Banner tells him that he's magnificent. He's never met an abomination with such agency. He's never experienced a Hulk that could reason, speak. And as he said, his name is Dr. Bruce Banner. Maybe this version has a name he wishes to be addressed by? Bruce towers over Bald Banner, telling him, I too am Dr. Bruce Banner. Some people call me the Hulk. Perhaps we should trade notes. But before Bruce could ask his first question, the computer tells him that the engines are in danger of overheating. Intimate furnace collapse is estimated in, and Bruce simply pulls back the power, allowing the engines to cool down. The Hulk finishes stabbing the giant-sized Wolverine in the head with his own claws, yelling out to Bruce, You cannot cage me! Not forever! 
Back over with Bruce and Bald Banner. Bruce explains that he was exposed to the gamma radiation from the test site, and this is what happened to him. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. What about him? Bald Banner says, well, he isn't one of the Hulks. He's afraid that he is something much, much worse. Here on this world, the experiment, the Gamma Bomb, was a success. It was supposed to be a green world, every home, car, and television powered by unlimited amounts of free power. He never wanted this. The powers that be, they took his invention and they set the world on fire. Ever since then, he's been hiding, trying to atone for the evil that he unleashed on the world, which in a roundabout way is why he was trying to find you, the Hulk. The G-bombs were unleashed on the world, and they didn't just cement the United States as the greatest empire in history, but it also did something else, something amazing. Sometimes there are survivors. The military classifies them as bio-waste casualties, but in reality, they're... Bruce stops him, telling him, they're monsters. Bald Banner says, you must understand I was forced to build it. I had been trying for so long to find one of the subjects. And then Bruce stops him, asking, where are they? and Banner points back to the fissure, stating they're in the void. Bruce grabs Bald Banner by the collar, asking, you designed this whole thing as a disposal unit for Hulks to throw them away? Bald Banner tells him no. Well, yes, but that's why I brought you here, to study and find a way to heal them. I was made to build it. Bruce grips him tighter, asking, who, who did this? Who's in charge of this monstrosity? Bald Banner tells him that it's his father-in-law, President Ross. Bruce begins to look into the history of this world. Things that happened that created this situation. In this world, Tony Stark never became a powerful tech developer. Instead, he drank himself to death. The X-Men were eliminated as mutant kind began to spread, believed to have been created by the Gamma Fallout. For the safety of the human race, the X-Men were removed. Bruce then looks through the other article, stating that this is all barbaric. It can't be real. Is there no one left? What about Blade or Moon Knight or Captain America or hell, even Spider? But Bald Banner tells him that those are just words to him. He doesn't know what any of that means. Just then there's a loud booming sound and Bald Banner runs to the computer telling him that they have been found. President Ross found them. Bruce turns and begins to walk over to the bunker and that's when he sees Ross's massive army. Ross should have sent more. Don't worry, I'll handle this. Bald Banner yells, you don't understand. But Bruce laughs, <laughs> I've danced with Ross a few times myself. Now I've slaved my ship's controls to your control panel. We'll stay connected, so don't come out. This won't take long. Bruce throws himself out into the fray with Ross ordering everyone to fire. But before Bruce could even finish saying Hulk smash, he is shot and the lasers go right through him. Bruce asks, what the hell was that? Fine, engine set to stage four. Inside of the engine room, Hulk throws Fing Fang Foom's head into the control room door, but then feels something metallic hitting him in the back of the head. He looks back, stupid Avengers, because what he sees is indeed the Avengers, but it's the Marvel Zombies versions. With the extra power of the Hulk fighting the zombies, Bruce begins to rip through President Ross's armies, and all Ross can do is stare, asking what the hell is that thing? But he isn't the only one as Bald Banner is watching from his monitoring room asking, what did I unleash? Just then, Ross radios Bald Banner asking, what the hell did you do? Tell that monster to stand down and turn himself in. Now, do you understand? Bald Banner tells him, I didn't create this. Well, you aren't much use to me then, are you? That's okay. I'll just send in my star pupil to fight him. Ross begins a countdown from 10 and Bald Banner yells over the comms to Bruce, stop fighting, stop, he's gonna unleash it. As Ross reaches zero, he kicks a chained up boy out of the helicopter, sending him plummeting towards Bruce. Bruce gets up looking around at the army retreating, asking what's going on? And Bald Banner tells him, they killed him. His name was Peter. Peter was a research student of mine. He was like a son. He was bitten by a spider that they irradiated. I thought I could help cure him. I have a dumb question, but the spider, exactly what kind of radiation are we talking about? And then a giant spider hulk lands with a crack of doom. As Ross wipes blood from his hand, he simply asks the bald banner how he kills that thing out there. And Bald Banner coughs up his own blood for a second, bursting out laughing. <laughs> Kill it? 
Back outside, this universe's version of Spider-Man slams Bruce into a wall while the computer struggles to keep up. Bruce says that they are pushing it to the next level. Stage five. Betty asks, what is he doing? You're going to kill the Hulk. He is just a child. And Bruce scoffs. <laughs> This again? Says, when do you care so much about protecting these supposed children? Why is this so important to you? Betty looks at him, telling him that she doesn't exist. And even she knows what happens if you lock a child away and abuse it. When you take away its freedoms, the Hulk will bottle up that fury, all that rage. And you know better than anyone what happens. I'm your mind talking to you, Bruce. As the throttle is pushed to five, the zombies in the engine room begin to stop reanimating. And that's when Hulk looks up. Banner, no! Stage five is the gods. And immediately, Thor cracks Hulk in the head with his hammer. Back outside, Bruce punches into the mutant with enough force to actually knock the Spider-Man thing back. In the holding cell, Bald Banner is begging Ross to stop. But Ross looks at his soldiers, telling them, How would you give me and the doctor some private time? The soldiers ask if that's a good idea, and Ross smiles. Oh, Banner wouldn't hurt a fly. Go on. Back out with Bruce, the mutant Spider-Man begins to crawl. Please, I'm sorry. I don't want to fight you anymore. As Peter slowly reverts to his human form, he looks up into the sky and sees several planes passing by, all now dropping bombs. Inside of the mindscape, Bruce looks at the image of Betty. See, you're always worrying too much. But then an explosion goes off, tearing a hole in the control room, revealing the empty void. What's going on? Bruce calls out, and the computer tells him that the hole has now been compromised. Full evacuation is recommended. Back with President Ross, he tells Bald Banner that now that they're alone, they're going to have a real honest chat. He appreciates the efforts in trying to solve the little monster problem, but the truth is, these things come in handy every now and then. We end up throwing out the small ones into the portal trash can. We only keep the strong ones. Got a fella by the name of Richards who puts leashes on him. How else do you think that we won all those wars? Back in the mindscape, Bruce calls to Betty, begging for help. He needs to get back out there and fight. But Betty's eyes turn black as she tells him, No, look at yourself, Bruce. You're helpless, trapped, as the mercy of forces and violence are out of your control. Remind you of anyone? Betty then turns back to the throttle, grabbing a hold of it, pushing more energy, increasing the engines to 60%, releasing literal demons into the engine room to battle against the Hulk. Back outside, the bombs that Ross dropped weren't bombs, they were containers. They were carrying the abominations. Back inside of the mindscape, Bruce himself tries to pull himself out of the void, telling this weird, bizarro version of Betty to help him. And she turns back. It's really spectacular, isn't it? This thing that you have built. I know I don't say this enough, but I am proud of you, my son. It is time to let go. Don't worry, I'll take over from here. As Betty tosses Bruce into the void, she takes a seat at the commander's chair and begins to push the engine to seven, then eight, then nine. Outside, all of the new abominations begin to get torn apart as the Hulk is now firing lasers out of his visor, turning everything in his path into a green pile of goop as the Hulk is finally hulking out. The Hulk continues to fight against the biggest and baddest villains known to the universe inside of the engine room, and the outside Hulk begins to become undone. This new bizarro Betty continues her monologue. Everyone seems to have their own Hulk. Well, what about the Hulk? What is the Hulk's Hulk? Outside, the Hulk's body continues to transform into something bigger, darker, meaner, something far more twisted than imaginable. While the Hulk inside of the engine room is screaming out for Bruce, Brother, help! And Bruce begins to feel something, a pull at him. But back with President Ross, he is now staring at the behemoth that the Hulk has turned into, asking, What have you done? The only thing that my men could describe this as is a titan. He orders his men to call in the bomber, the one with the gamma bomb. Ball Banner yells, You can't! It will take out three major cities with it! Sit back down, Banner. We're doing this together, right, son? In a last-ditch effort to stop Ross, Bald Banner gets up, throwing himself at the president. Inside of the mindscape, Bruce has managed to claw himself back and yelling, SHUT IT DOWN! SHUT IT ALL DOWN! And a now grotesque shadow version of Betty looks back. Or what? You'll get angry! You have no power here. You have no control. 
And Bruce tells her, I know, but someone else does. And he smashes the glass, revealing a lever to the engine room. The doors begin to open, and there's a thump, thump, thump. Hulk crashes through screaming at Betty, and as her control fades, so does the Titan Hulk. After a giant explosion, Bruce looks around, telling them, I did it. I finally... Oh. The door opens back up to the control room, but before he can walk into it, the Hulk calls out to him. Welcome home, Banner. But that's when Bald Banner calls out that he stopped Ross. He's dead. But he can't stop the G-bomb from falling. So Bruce runs back to the control room, telling the computer to begin the repair sequence, and the stolen aim tech gets to work repairing the body of the Hulk and the armor that he was wearing, turning him back into Spaceship Hulk. As Bruce gets closer to the door, the Hulk calls out once more from the engine room. The doors begin to shut on him as Bruce is locking the Hulk back into this hellscape where he will forever fight to power Bruce Banner's spaceship Hulk. And what does the Hulk say as he is being imprisoned again? Hulk, sorry. Bald Banner yells over the comms asking what is happening and Bruce resumes controls. I'm here, what can I do? Bald Banner tells him, thank God, listen closely. We might be able to divert the bomb. The portal was designed to retrieve Gamma signatures, so when that bomb detonates, the gate in theory should absorb the fallout and save this world. Bruce opens the portal, and as the bomb goes off, all of the Gamma energy is sucked into it. But the Hulk is also Gamma infused, which means he's going as well. And this world is left all alone. Bald Banner tells him, I'm sorry. I don't know where it's going to send you. Just don't, don't end up like me. Don't become another weapon. Bruce pilots the Hulk through the portal, trying to navigate to the next destination. But then the computer warns him that something is heading his way in this vast void. What the hell? How could they have found me? Oh, great. In the interdimensional rift, a fully charged Mjolnir flies directly towards him. It's time for the Hulk versus Thor. But that's the next story arc here on the Hulk. If you want to check it out now, it's already started. It's called Banner of War. Check it out at your local comic book store or stick around as we are bringing you 60 second shorts as to what is happening in that story until it resolves and I bring you one of these videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when the next chapter of Hulk comes out and check out our Patreon to get early access to our videos. Thank you so much for watching this all the way to the end. You are incredible for supporting this channel and I'll see you next time.